Hello everybody, this is Carla, and this time I'm reviewing episode 2 of season 3 of Sleepy Hollow, which is titled Whispers in the Dark, and that is a title that I love, if only because it's the title of a song by Skrillet, and I love that song, and I had high hopes for this episode just because of that. I have to say, though, that the episode kind of let me down a bit. I mean, the first episode of the season was so good. I enjoyed it so much. It, it felt really fresh. Well, this one kind of felt a bit more like settling down into the old Sleepy Hollow. So, it felt a bit slow to me. Um, they kept showing Pandora and not really saying anything about her, where she came from, what she, what her plan is or anything. So, it feels to me like they're just stretching it out. I mean, I know it's been two episodes and I shouldn't feel this way, but I do. I can't help it. It's just, I wish they would kind of tell us a little bit about her with it, each episode that passes. And it doesn't seem like they're going to do that. So... I'm not sure. I, I don't think I would like to go on like three or four more episodes without actually knowing anything about her at all, other than her name and the fact that she has a box. Because I would find that very annoying. I, I really hope that they start like throwing out kernels of, of, of the truth behind her, who she is, where she came from, that kind of stuff, because otherwise it just gets boring it's just another villain laughing behind in the shadows going ha 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 i will have your head good guys and it's just not unless you know why it's just not fun so i really hope they they show us more of her and because of that i mean the, the shadow thingy the the wraith the shadow wraith wasn't particularly impressive i i didn't even care for the Bet Betsy Russ scenes, which I was expecting to really enjoy. I didn't care. I just... Ichabod's secret was kind of blah, um, in a way. I mean, I know he felt guilty for having ever thought of renouncing, you know, his vow to fight for freedom, like, for just one half of a second. But... For us, who are human beings and are watching it, it's kind of like, dude, come on, you didn't, that's what's important. So it didn't feel like some big dark secret that he should be ashamed of. I mean, I, I almost wish they could have gone without it, but of course they had to, like, um, they needed the flashback in order to show that you need to know the name of Wraith in order to fight against it. So, I mean, it's not like they could have just let it out. I just don't really understand why Ichabod would be so concerned about it. I mean, it was half a second, dude. Get over it. <laughs> Abby's secret was better, and that is mostly the reason why I actually enjoyed more of the ending of the episode um like once they figured out that you needed the name of the wraith to fight it i wasn't bored because i'm i've read many um supernatural books and i've watched many supernatural shows and one thing i've learned is that in the supernatural there's this thing where names are important and i like them bringing that here although it's not really as hard-hitting when the name is Collins than when it is some kind of like really intimidating, long, old, ancient, powerful name. But the concept of it I liked. So when it was revealed that that is how you fought the Wraith, I was like, okay, I can get behind that. And then in the end, of course, um, realizing that Abby found her father. I like that. It's it's a sign that there will be a bigger overarching plot line to this thing. Because the other thing I expected to be an overarching overarching plot line, which is um, Abby's new boss. Honestly, he does nothing for me. Not yet. I mean, he, it it almost seemed like he was kind of like sleazy. I don't know. It's like. He's like, yeah, sure, do whatever you want. I trust your instincts. Go ahead. It's like, dude, you're her boss. You have to put some limits here. You can't just treat her as a friend. It was weird. I I hope we get to see his more authoritative side later on because I just, 
I don't like how lax he is. It's they're not BFFs. They're you're her boss, and that's gotta come up eventually in the future. And so that one I didn't really care about either. The one I did care about, the one subplot that I did care about, was um uh the Joe subplot, which I, honestly I liked it because I like Joe. Um and I I mean I like that it relates back to both Abby and Jenny with the whole Corbin thing because Corbin is such an important part of the show and he isn't really even around. I mean, he died in the first episode. So it's like for me it's a central part of the episode that Corbin is the one that started them on this path. Corbin is the one that realized something greater than anyone was going on in Sleepy Hollow and he was the one to notice that Jenny and Abby would have to be involved in that mission somehow. So I like anything that relates to Corbin and I like Joe. I like the idea that Corbin tried to safeguard him as much as possible from even having to know about any of this. And honestly, I feel it's natural for him now to want to know, you know, because it's, I mean, human beings are just like that. You tell us your father was doing something, but don't ask. You have to ask. So I understand. Joe, I like him. I think he could be a good addition to the team. I mean, I'd love to see him as a regular. Um, <clears throat> and honestly, I think Jenny could use a little something, you know? It's, they seem like a cute pair. I don't know. Maybe it's just my shipper brain and just uh, overreacting to everything. But I think they could be good together. I don't know. Even if they're not, they're good friends and... I think she could use some backup because as kick ass as Jenny is, and once again she was really kick ass in this episode. Yes, I love Jenny fighting and just bad mouthing everybody because come on, that woman is badass. But like, even if she is badass, she needs backup. And honestly, Abby can't be there all the time. They have separate lives, which is good in a sense because I don't think siblings really should be like I mean you need to split at some point but they have separate lives and they have separate missions and they have different things that one and the other can do and have different specialties and that's fine but at the same time I don't think Jenny should be going in alone to all these weird dark places so if Joe joins in, which I hope he does, it would be good for her to have some backup. I mean, probably going to take a while for him to actually catch up because obviously he has no idea what he's getting into at the moment. But it could be good. I mean, Holly's not around anymore. Sorry about that. My phone just rang. Um, Holly's not around anymore, so I mean, someone has to be there. For Jenny mm. and uh, I don't know I think he could be a good addition and I hope we see more of him obviously we're going to see a bit more but I hope he sticks around that's what I mean like I think they could use a fourth head around in the team it would be good but other than that I just didn't really care I liked the last 10 minutes and that's pretty much it the rest of it I just didn't didn't really care for and I really hope they do something with Pandora, because as cool as she seemed in the first episode, just two episodes of the same thing, she's like borderline cartoonish at this point, and I just don't want that because she could be such a cool character. So I hope that they start giving us more insight into her instead of just having her cackling in the background all the time. Um, so yeah, not my favorite episode some flashes of future greatness, I guess, with maybe Joe and the whole thing with Abby and Jenny's dad. I think that could be a really interesting path to go down with, so I hope, I hope that's where they're going. I hope they do it well. For the moment, not my favorite episode, and I don't know, it was just pretty boring, so not, not all that great. 
Um, so yeah, that's it for my review. Um, if you want more, you can um, also visit thegeekybub.com, which is where we have all our reviews of Sleepy Hollow, as well as other TV shows, movies, books, games, anything you want, you can find it there. So be sure to stop by, and um, I'll see you guys in my next review. Bye!